sparkling, golden, pure, refreshing. A beverage as old as history. The ancient Babylonians were probably the first to brew beer. The Egyptians, too, brewed a beverage from fermented barley. It was a beer reserved for the great feasts of the day. The Roman conquest of Egypt introduced the beer to the Western civilization of the day, as Caesar and his warriors drank toasts to their victories. The Anglo-Saxon monks are credited with the development of many brewing formulas. The improved brews were well established as fine beverages, high in food value, by the time the pilgrims set out for America. Later, taverns and inns became the meeting places of men who helped make American history as they enjoyed their favorite brews. Yes, the fine beer and ale we enjoy today are beverages with a heritage which is unequaled, yet they are as modern as today. In today's brewery laboratories, knowledge passed down through the centuries is combined with modern chemistry of food to produce beverages that would have been the envy of the kings and emperors of old. From the laboratory to the tanks where the finest of American malted grains are fermented, the beer of today is brewed under spotlessly clean conditions. Modern scientific instruments control the entire brewing process. No other food products get more careful attention in manufacture than American beer and ale. In addition, the brewing of this fine beer and ale today is one of America's great industries, contributing much to our economy. Some 400 modern breweries in operation today represent an investment of more than $2 billion in buildings and equipment. To staff these breweries requires nearly 100,000 employees, earning $350 million a year. American farms supply most of the ingredients required for brewing. Barley, wheat, corn, rice, hops, and soybeans. Thousands of tons of it. To be more specific, every year the farmers of America sell the breweries more than one billion pounds of farm products worth $250 million. From these fine golden grains, the breweries produce over a billion gallons of immaculately pure beer and ale in barrels, cans, and bottles to suit every taste, occasion, and personal preference. Beverages high in food value and rich in tradition, ready to add to gracious living the American way. About one-fourth of the spent grain goes back to the farms as cattle feed. Because of the high concentration of protein and fat, the spent grains are of special value in increasing milk production in addition, the excess brewer's yeast is one of the richest sources of vitamin B complex. Much of it is used in preparation of vitamin extracts for medicinal purposes. These byproducts are, of course, untaxed. But the beer and ale itself are subjected to heavy direct federal and state excise taxes. Taxes which help pay the cost of fine schools, modern highways for our pleasure and communication and operation of our government. Taxes on beer and ale provide $850 million a year to state and federal governments. This is in addition to the property and income taxes paid by the brewers, beer distributors, retailer, and their respective employees. The brewing industry is proud of its contributions to America in fine malt beverages, employment, raw material purchases, byproducts, and taxes. And so are the people who form the link between the brewers and the consuming public. As the connecting link, the men and women who distribute, sell, and serve malt beverages have a two-way responsibility. To the brewers, they are responsible for the protection of the quality of the beer and ale they handle. To the American public, the sellers and servers of beer have an even greater responsibility. And that's because to the public, they are the brewing industry. They are good American citizens who take their responsibilities seriously. The distributors, for example, they know the importance of cleanliness. They make every effort to keep their storage buildings and delivery trucks spotless. 
Their drivers know the importance of friendliness, courtesy, and observance of traffic regulations. Grocers and takeout store operators, too, realize the importance of cleanliness, observance of the law, and service to the public. They know, for example, that the public expects them to stock beer and ale in the various sizes of bottles and cans available, as well as in a choice of brands. And as good American citizens, they know and obey the laws and regulations pertaining to the sale of beer, as well as all other laws governing their business. But the enjoyment of beer by Americans is not limited to family and neighborhood gatherings. Inns and taverns are part of American history. Today's taverns, though much more modern, strive to live up to the reputation established by the famous places of the past. Friendliness is still the aim, whether it be a sophisticated lounge, a small place in the industrial section of town, or the average tavern in the average neighborhood. The neighborhood tavern is a friendly meeting place for the community, the average citizen's club. Its owner, he's just another good American. He knows that he and his operation reflect on the whole brewing industry, he wants to keep that reflection a good one. And that's why he practices the five tested principles of good tavern operation. First of all, he protects the quality of the beer and ale he sells by serving it at the right temperature, whether it be in bottles or on draft. Second, he knows that he's serving beverages which are made under immaculate conditions. He believes they should be served in clean glasses and in clean surroundings. What's more, he knows that a tavern should be a friendly place where people can relax, discuss issues of the day, and enjoy sparkling malt beverages. People who come into his place are his guests. You might call that hospitality, something people expect in a tavern. That's especially important when it comes to serving members of the armed forces, whether they be from a nearby post just passing through, or residents of the community on leave. The tavern operator knows he and the community have a responsibility to servicemen and women. He works with armed forces officials in all matters which might involve his operation so far as servicemen and women are concerned. And that brings us to the next principle of good tavern operation, observance of the laws. A good operator knows that laws are designed to help preserve the rights of everyone. He makes every effort to observe them and cooperates fully with all law enforcement agencies. Being a good citizen is the fifth principle of good tavern operation. He knows the public expects him and other businessmen to take an active part in all worthy local activities. He knows he must also serve on committees and support activities like the Community Chest, March of Dimes, Cancer Fund, Chamber of Commerce, and similar organizations. Yes, quality of product, cleanliness, friendliness, observance of the law, and good citizenship. These are the principles. There are some who look for any opportunity to magnify every mistake and use it to seek prohibition of the malt beverages, which add to the enjoyment of gracious living. However, more than a million Americans are a part of this great industry, as long as they and the millions more Americans whom they serve continue to live up to the fine heritage of beer and brewing, we can continue to enjoy gracious living with the help of fine beer and ale. Gracious living, self-government, freedom, tied to the way of doing things that have made the American economy what it is today and have helped make America great. That's the way we, as Americans, like it.